Hi there, Jacqueline. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Good. So uh, my name's Jacqueline Turner. I am a uh, registered holistic nutritionist, uh, personal trainer, and former uh, athlete and published model. And uh, myself and Danny wanted to put together a podcast uh, for the purposes of uh, spreading information on natural health. So, um, you know, the purpose of this for me is just to, you know, enlighten all of you on um, ways that you can, you know, prevent and cure and treat uh, different diseases uh, in a natural way. So we're going to be sharing a lot of really valuable content um, and information. And our hopes is that we, you know, can really support all of you on your uh, health journey which is why we have uh, called this Empowered uh, Conscious Health Podcast, because we essentially want to give you the power back over um, your personal health. Fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. And as Jacqueline said, my name is Danny, Danny Williams, and I teach yoga and meditation. And I, I'm really focused also on energy healing and and German new medicine, Germanic healing knowledge, as it's now known, and just anything to do with health and wellness uh, overall on all levels. So heart, mind, body, and soul. And yeah, I just really want to spread and talk about all the things I've learned in my life. And Jacqueline and I get along and we, we see many of these things similarly, but then we also have our own unique perspectives and have learned all sorts of other things. So we can learn together here so yeah i'm really looking forward to it and yeah it's actually health consciousness podcast right oh right <laughs> we're this is the first one we, so first yeah. recording <laughs> um but yeah because we want to also or empowered consciousness health podcast sorry yeah. that's what it is because we want to really promote that empowered consciousness mentality so we're not in a victim mode we're empowered to take you know responsibility for our own level of consciousness and our health which go hand in hand, I think. So, okay, yeah, I so really we'll like. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I liked how you how you said their responsibility. Yeah, over. yeah, <clears throat> that's it. Like we can, we're just not in victim mode, and we have to pull ourselves out of that so that we can fully heal and you know listen to our own body and yeah tap into to all the power we have within. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> Okay, so Jacqueline, you want to share your story first, your whole health journey? Yeah, it's been a long journey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I've had my ebbs and flows in it as well over the years, but it got started for me back in 2008. And uh, I just got to a point where I wasn't feeling well all the time. Um, I couldn't cope with some of the situations in my life. Uh, stress was getting to me. I had gained a lot of weight in a very quick period of time. And I sort of hit my like, okay, something's got to change here. And I kind of just decided to sign up to do exercise classes. And what I found, which what is the thing that I got addicted to, which was how much better I felt starting my day off with exercise and not just a little bit of exercise, really intense exercise. You know, I was somebody who would have like five different kinds of snacks to eat after dinner because I was so addicted to carbs and sugar. I remember waking up every morning feeling sick to my stomach, um, you know, too sick to eat breakfast. I would live off of coffee to get to work. And then I would deal with all the stresses in the workplace. Um, my energy was low, my mood was down. And what I found was, you know, all of the things, my sleep improved, exercising in the morning made me want to eat better. Um, and so that's just how it started. And then the diet part of it followed after that pretty closely, because I realized that my workout wasn't going to be as good or as effective if I didn't eat properly the night before. And after a couple of months of this, I just decided to go full on 100%, went totally clean. I was at the gym. I switched from classes into strength training. And, 
you know, it cured my depression. It cured my anxiety. My sleep was better. I started dropping weight dramatically within three months. People were commenting on like, what the heck are you doing? Like you've changed so much, like in all aspects. And then the beautiful thing about it is when I talk to women about sometimes getting started on a health journey, they feel like there's this this pressure in the workplace, like people are bringing in unhealthy lunches and all this stuff. And I ended up becoming um, someone of influence in the office where the, the bosses that I worked for stopped ordering pizza for staff meetings and started ordering freshie to a point that (laughs) a few years later, their dentists, they decided to franchise a freshie because they got like, so into it. If you're not familiar with that is, this was like a (laughs) healthier eating out place um and after I was strength training for about two years and then people started talking to me about doing fitness competitions and I kind of watched that and I was like yeah no like that's not for me I'm not putting that bathing suit on and you know prancing around the stage like I'm just not into that and then um a few months later there was a group from the gym of about eight people that decided to they were all going to do it together. So, you know, I got involved with the team and, you know, for the first time I had like a real, real goal and that I had to work really hard towards. And in that training, um, it sort of really taught me about, you know, how you can achieve anything that you're willing to work for. It taught me discipline And it taught me, you know, how to have a positive mentality and a belief in myself. And it's also allowed me to be able to communicate well to people how to achieve goals on like every level. Um, I had a really great coach who, you know, no matter what, every day told me he believed I was going to win. So, you know, striving for those goals, you know, if you are doing anything like a, like a training program, weight loss program, and you don't have a lot of faith or belief in yourself, it's really hard to be dedicated when things get challenging. So I had that, um, I did end up winning and then I ended up continuing on, um, to win Ontario's to win Canada's I placed really well in internationals. And then everybody in the community was like, well, can you train me? Can you show me what you did? And so I ended up becoming quite a big influencer for health and wellness in my small town. And I did that for a few years. And after about three years of training, um, I wanted to know more about the nutrition part of it. And when I went to do holistic nutrition, I thought what I was going to learn from that was how to help people lose weight better. (laughs) And when I entered into it, I I remember having no clue at all, like never, not even on the radar, that diet and specific nutrition recommendations and protocols, there's literally a diet plan for every single kind of health condition. There's different supplements and vitamins you can take to boost nutritional deficiencies are really connected. Um, And so I got all this information and now people were coming to me you know, to get in shape and lose weight. And I was like, well, you know, if you're suffering from these migraine headaches all the time or these PMS symptoms, or, you know, do you want to keep taking your acid reflux medication? And literally within like four to six weeks of people that were coming to me and I hadn't even graduated, I was just like applying this knowledge as I learned it were completely reversing their health conditions that they had been suffering with for years. I'm talking people on acid reflux medication for like 15 years, two to three weeks, uh, like off. And, you know, obviously I'd say, you know, consult with your doctor if medications were involved. I'd say, you know, you know, follow this, these recommendations for a while. I can't tell you to not to do that, but you know, if you decide that with your doctor and you're going to stick to this diet protocol and every time. So that became really awesome. And then I kind of got more into that world versus um, like the body composition fitness world. 
And uh, that's been really rewarding in itself. And mental health as well. I've had people with um, depression, anxiety, all of it's connected to diet. If you're on depression, anxiety medications, you're on, you know, medications to boost your serotonin. Why don't you have enough? Well, your gut health is, is off. So, you know, there's just so much suffering going on with health and people have no idea and they're not getting the answers from their doctors. Doctors are there to treat. So that's been sort of like, you know, my journey with it. And I'm still working with people now for natural health, still doing weight loss. Um, but yeah, it's just, that's the kind of information that I want to get out and share with people on this podcast and diving into a lot of content on how you can take these recommendations and these tools to completely reverse, you know, those kinds of conditions or prevent, you know, those conditions from, you know, occurring in your life. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's a a really nice journey. Yeah. And I totally agree with the food and it's really just cutting out all these you know, these things that aren't really food, they're kind of half food, half poison, right? Like the, these, all these people on these acid blockers and you had them off of them in a couple of weeks. So that's just fantastic. Just by eating food, real food, (laughs) real food. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Full food. Not half poison, half food products. (laughs) Yeah. So, so I would really like to hear about your journey, Danny, and how you ended up you know, getting into yoga and, and health and wellness. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I mean, I'm really just going to go back to pretty much my whole start of my life. Cause I was always very into like sports and things like that. From Like I was always active and, you know, as a kid and playing loads of sports just constantly. So I was always, you know, fairly fit, but then, and then, you know, as you know, into high school and you want to be healthy, but I did have certain things start to come up. Like I started to get back issues and I thought maybe it's just because I'm playing so many sports and I'm missing that. So that was kind of a thing I had to deal with. But in some ways, those can be uh, a blessing, like having these, these type of kind of chronic things because uh, you just end up delving more and more into health, you could say, and healing basically. But anyway, you know, coming out of high school. So I did have that back stuff going on, but I, I was still very, you know, doing a lot of soccer a lot of working out lots of running and just lots of sports in general and then <clears throat> moving into my 20s I remember I had done some chiropractic and then I ended up doing some physio so I learned more about that type of healing and, and it worked and then I stopped seeing anyone my back was feeling good for a while but I was uh, and I thought I always ate pretty well like I always tried to but you know when you look back at it now I, I definitely see I was eating a lot of those half food, half poison products, right? More than I knew. Um, And then, you know, into my 20s, I ended up getting a herniated disc at one point, like uh, my back started bugging me again. And then I saw a chiropractor and and he, in hindsight, I see he wasn't maybe the best chiropractor there is. And the disc herniated like two days after seeing him. So that ended up throwing me back into a lot more physio. So I learned a lot about how you can kind of heal with those type of exercises as well, which was good. But, but again, it was still something that continued on. I'm going to come back to that later. That's why I bring it up. So anyway, I continued, you know, through my thirties and just kind of managing that back stuff, but still remaining very active with working out and, and running and soccer and sports in general. And then around 20 well, I'd done some Bikram's yoga but it's quite different from yoga in general but in 2014 with uh, one of my exes Katie I ended up getting into more like meditative yoga and that really opened up the door to to all that spirituality and that side of things which was uh, very interesting to me and I've continued down that path because there's just so much there in my opinion so I went down that road and And, you know, it kind of progressed and I got more and more into the yoga and, you know, throughout my life, I, I, again, I always thought I ate pretty healthy, but I did tend to, you know, party a bit on the weekends and and did that kind of thing. But that started to phase out as well. 
and there just became more and more emphasis on food and all the rest of it and and seeing that some of these foods maybe you thought were okay or maybe not so good I, and i started going to naturopaths <clears throat> excuse me some naturopaths because as you mentioned with standard doctors it's not their fault like they're well intentioned but they've had basically no you know training on food and nutrition and how you know it's absolutely critical as far as health goes right like they're more like you said, just kind of treating symptoms and mainly through that pharmaceutical model, which really doesn't facilitate health. It's more like sick care, to be quite honest. So anyway, um, so naturopaths I found to be very helpful. And, you know, they, they look at all the food and what's maybe you have sensitivities to. Um, and, and I do like that model, although the, I do see some limitations, which I've since discovered, which I'll get into in a few minutes. But so as I continued on down that spirituality road into more and more meditation and, and mindfulness and just more and more yoga. And eventually I phased soccer out the last two seasons, like this one guy, brutal slide tackle. So sprained my ankle and you know, whatever, that's fine. You get over it, but it was, you know, it really messes you up, especially when you're doing yoga and you notice like how much pain it kind of causes you, <laughs> you know, and how messed up your ankle is because you're, you're, you're going deep into it when you're doing yoga a lot. And then the next season I was on a breakaway and another shitty slide tackle from this guy, total foul. Both of them were big fouls. Didn't even get the ball and sprained my other ankle. And I was like, okay, I'll finish the season after that. I'm just, cause I was getting more and more into the yoga. So I stopped playing soccer competitively. And <clears throat> then I went even deeper into the yoga and eventually did my, you know, teacher, teacher training with my primary teacher, Tracy. She's fantastic. Tracy Groshak. So and then that just, got more into that. Also around that time, I'd say 2018 ish, I got really into podcasts and that just, you know, I'd already been to natural paths and that helped me learn even more about, about the food and a lot of the things like the fasting, which we were talking about. And um, so yeah, and autophagy, like when you do fasting, it's good to be able to switch metabolically. Like you can burn glucose or you can burn ketones, which your liver produces primarily from your fat. So it's really good for that. So you don't, you know, get hangry all the time. You, you're a little more flexible. And we were discussing autophagy, Jacqueline and I, and just how great that is. It's like your body cleaning house, getting rid of old dysfunctional cells and tissues, mitochondria, and making room for fresh, fresh cell regenerations, many benefits there. And I'm sure we'll dig deeper into that in the podcast, but anyhow, the podcasts were very big for me because you can learn so much, you know, just when you're driving or cooking or whatever, listening to podcasts. So I learned a lot more about the food health as well and what not to eat and organic regenerative agriculture and farming, which I really believe in a lot. I'd been veggie for a while, vegetarian, but then now I really believe the important thing is, you know, like where the food's coming from. Like I, I want it all to be organic and local if I can. And from, you know, regenerative farms that are using proper practices and, you know, incorporating animals, you know, there because they make very healthy soil, you know, having them shit and all the rest of it and just eating the grass and cycling the fields and the crops. And, and yeah, so there's just so much there, like with food health. And, and I think we can do such a better job. Like these industrial agriculture operations are absolutely abysmal. Like they just kill all the wildlife. They kill the soil. You know, it's supposed to be a rich living microbiome within the soil, but they just turn it into dirt with these practices, spraying them with glyphosate, which is a toxic chemical. And then they even, they spray the glyphosate on the crops right before they, you know, after they've harvested them because they help dry them out. And then that's going right into people's stomach, destroying their gut bacteria. So it's just a vicious cycle. It kills all the natural wildlife. You know, it's just a terrible practice and it's used to make terrible food, basically processed food, which is not good for people and it's covered in toxic chemicals. So those are big issues that, that we could deal with by switching on mass to the organic regenerative model and, you know, incorporating animals in, and, you know, wild free range animals are, are fantastic for the soil and, and for people, if we do choose to eat them, um, they're just a, a superfood in my opinion. So I just, I just feel like that's more the way. And it's about using these ethical practices in my opinion, of course, killing an animal, that's a shame, but if you're, they're having a great life, then I don't think it's so bad. And getting away from the factory farming, of course, because that's, you know, horrible. And those animals are not being fed, right? They're being fed that terrible industrial agriculture grown food, which is not healthy for humans. And it's certainly not healthy for them because they're supposed to eat grass, basically, you know, organic grass. 
not with chemicals all over it, not just grains and with chemicals all over it. So that was a big, there's so much there with the food and farming. And I'd like to actually get into, you know, farming in the next few years. Other people I know are interested too, and maybe getting a lot of property where we can do farming and produce food. And I went out to a great one out in Chilliwack the other day called Local Harvest. They did a farm tour. This, this fellow Dan owns it with his family. And it's really nice, like what they're doing out there. So things like that, where you could also have a retreat and wellness center, you know, with all different types of practitioners, you know, from energy healing, which I've really got into lately. And, um, and, you know, we could do like more like what Jacqueline does, which is fantastic and yoga and just, just everything cover everything. Cause there's so much there, you know? Um, and then more recently, this is a really big one for me as well has been the, it used to be called German new medicine. Now it's being called Germanic healing knowledge, uh, Germanic healing knowledge for certain reasons. And, um, which we'll get into because we'll probably do a full episode on it or several even uh, because we can have Mm -hmm. some great, get great guests on who know a lot more than I do, but it's basically digs into, it basically digs into things that sometimes the more natural pathic model where you're focused on food, which is great and cutting out pharmaceuticals and all for all that. And that works as well. And that's very holistic, but there's sometimes that won't heal some of the chronic issues people have. And like, like me, for example, having these back things for, you know, 30 years um, and what they found in German new medicine and they have the science behind it is just absolutely impeccable. This Dr. Hamar discovered it in 1978 and, you know, worked with it for 40 years till he passed away a few years ago, but they basically found scientifically provable again and again, you know, everything he found was he never made it a rule within Germanic healing knowledge until it was hundred percent, but they found that there's this correlation where basically conflict shocks occur like in life, like that's what they call them, a Durkheimer syndrome in in that for reasons we'll get into later, but it happens in in our psyche interprets the conflict. It could be an argument, it could be a car accident. It could be, you know, any, any of many things you could lose somebody who you love, you know, so a separation conflict or a loss conflict like that, someone dies Either way, your psyche interprets it. We're all unique. So we, Jacqueline and I could have the same thing happen and interpret it differently. So our psyche interprets it. And then dependent on how our psyche interprets it, a a lesion forms in our brain. So in a particular spot, again, dependent on how we interpreted the conflict. And then a body part is affected. So they act as a unit, psyche, brain, and body. So body part is affected dependent on where that lesion forms. And from there, you go into this biological program that's there to protect us evolutionarily. But the issue is nowadays, we can sometimes get stuck in what's called a hanging conflict or a hanging healing. And these, these same things go on for animals as well. It's just they don't tend to get stuck in hanging because they don't get triggered. They just go through the program, you know, conflict active and then resolve it into the resolution, the healing phase it does basically like a more of a sympathetic conflict active phase and then a parasympathetic healing phase. And then you come out of it back to homeostasis. Uh, And and these are where you'll get things like cancer will show up. And a lot of these things that we call illness and disease in German new medicine, Germanic healing knowledge, they call them symptoms. They're just symptoms showing us that we're either in conflict active or we're in the healing phase. Generally the symptoms arise in the healing phase, but it's dependent on certain factors like what, what germ layer um, the conflict originated because it's all separated into germ layers. So brain stem is, is one germ layer. I'm trying to remember ectoderm or endoderm, and then you have mesoderm old and new, which is the cerebellum and then the cerebral medulla. And then we have the, uh, Again, it's ectoderm or endoderm, I'm forgetting, but it's the cerebral cortex. So it's dependent in which germ layer, basically, the organ is um, affiliated with. So that, so it's all very interesting when you dig into it. And we'll have to get more into that later because there's a lot there. And we could talk for hours on it. it. They go so deep and there's great resources for it. And I wrote a document just as an intro for people. So once we uh, get things dialed in here, we can we can send that out for people it just has a bunch of info and then there's a bunch of great links to some of the best resources that i've found anyway that dig into it deeper so yeah as far as online courses podcasts and just websites that are very comprehensive and cover all the the impeccable science behind it so yeah it's really exciting going down that road and for me that'll be the massive cornerstone 
for the rest of my life on my uh, health and healing journey. And yeah, I really just want to help, you know, just provide as much support to people as I can as well so that everybody can feel healthy and, you know, health and harmony in heart, mind, body, and soul on all levels, which are all critical in my opinion, you know, we just want everything to be in alignment and in harmony. And yeah, there's just so many, you know, things to keep working on and be mindful and aware of. So that's probably good for now. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for sharing all of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There's, yeah. there's so much um, knowledge and science out there that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and it all goes together. Like, you know, in 2020, that was sort of, um, you know, I'd been doing all these things with body and nutrition. Mm -hmm. But when I had like my whole life fall apart, I realized I was missing the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So that's been you know, a big part of my journey over the last two years is starting to recognize how important all of those practices are as well, because mm -hmm. everything goes together, mind, body, mm -hmm. spirit, and yeah, again, everything that I've learned and known, even you talking about this, it's, how are you calling it now? Germanic? The Germanic healing, healing knowledge and Germanic basically knowledge. Dr. Hamar wanted to switch to that because he encountered so much corruption from the medical industry so he just didn't want to have medicine in there anymore because throughout you know he just encountered mm -hmm. an obscene amount of corruption basically yeah. um, you know not in most everyday doctors it's obviously coming from the regulatory boards and things like that and the you know, the big pharma connections and all that type of stuff. And they were trying to suppress this, this healing knowledge, basically. So yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. So, you know, with that past traumas, you know, whether in childhood or whatever, you know, like you said, they're doing these brain scans and they're, they're seeing that there's changes in the brain mm -hmm. and there are, and even, you know, anything that you've had, you've had any trauma in your history it can show up and affect your health it can affect your mindset how you talk to yourself every day if you're you know disempower disempowering thoughts if you're thinking negatively it's going to impact your health and your hormones and everything energetically there's energy you know energy is your whole body is made of energy and there's so many things that you can do that help to amplify your frequency in your body and I see people that, you know, they're doing the energy healing and they're, there's even these little devices people are getting now that will like tell you if there's, a, you know, uh, something off balance and they'll, they'll create like a frequency, but like, that's really great too. But if you're waking up every day and you're putting chemicals and poison into your body, mm -hmm. you're lowering your vibration. And it's not just what it's doing in your body, it's, it will manifest in the rest of your life, you know, so it all fits together. And, you know, you know, foundationally, it starts with what you're putting in your mouth, it starts with if you're moving your body, you know, and then how you're thinking, you know, if your gut health is off, it's going to affect your mental health. So you can't just like pick one thing it all kind of fits together and so it's a, just a huge broad spectrum and it's amazing that we have all this knowledge and information about it because we were not aware for a very long time and so it's something to be excited about i think that you know from my end of it whenever i'm working with people with diet and nutrition you say the word diet and people feel really negative like oh no i'm gonna have to give up all these things and da 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 and it's like get excited about it. Like there's literally a healthy version of everything you like to eat. You can make healthy, <laughs> sugar-free chocolate stuff. Like you can, there's so many things you can do. And, and, it, and again, it's like where the source of where your food comes from, right? Like you said, is, is a huge thing. Where's your meat coming from? Um, how much processed food are you taking in the day? You know, if you feel overwhelmed, just, just take a look at that and start minimal, minimizing it, start cutting back, start choosing whole foods and grow some stuff, have a garden. My mom always had a big garden growing up where I was lucky for that. We lived in the country, 
My landlord has a huge garden here, so I can literally just walk into my front yard and pick fresh lettuce every morning for my to make my lunches with. It's amazing. Um, and when you have that alive food, chemical free, it's very high vibrational. So you're going to feel the way that you eat. You're, it's going to affect your energy levels. So, you know, take the time to maybe do some of that stuff, grow some of your own food, you know, even if it's just a couple of things, and then just start watching where, you know, your sources of that stuff are coming from. I used to think like, oh, organic. And I remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, my cousin talking to me about, you know, watching where her meat comes from, the energy of that animal. And I thought she was right out to lunch and I would never, you know, you just thought it was like a vegan or thing with organics. Like it's all woohoo. It doesn't make a difference. And then when I started learning about it, <laughs> mm -hmm. it really, you know, it's huge. It's huge. Um, and for people listening that, you know, I work with or who are thinking about, you know, wondering why they're stuck with weight loss. If you're taking in chemicals into your body, your body's natural defense is to create fat to protect yourself from chemicals. So if you feel stuck in your life and you're doing, you have made a lot of changes. Again, it comes down to where is your food coming from? How's it being grown? Um, these days, you know, if you get a tomato, for example, it's mostly just sodium and fat. There's like no nutritional content left in it. And you've got to eat about eight oranges these days to get the nutritional benefits that one used to have. Mm. So the vitamins and minerals in food has super declined as well, which is why I get a lot of people that are having issues with their metabolism because they have nutritional deficiencies. So then you've got some of your vitamins and that kind of thing coming in to help boost your levels, but ideally you want to get everything that your body needs from natural food. Absolutely. Like you said, like we really are this holistic unit, right? Everything works together. You can't neglect any bit of it. Like our thoughts, you know, the foods we put on those both influence each other both ways. You know what I mean? The food you eat will influence your thoughts and then your thoughts will influence the food that you end up eating as well. So yeah, just send ourselves love as much as we can for sure. And I do recommend any, anyone who's, you know, fortunate enough to have the opportunity and whatnot to go to their farmer's markets or things like that. Or like you said, grow your own food. Cause then you get these healthier soils and the food has so much more, so many more nutrients in them. And yeah, like you can just taste the difference when you go to the farmer's market, even compared to like, say going to whole foods, organic compared to these farmer's markets, they're just not the same level of organic food. It's just far better what you're getting from the farmer's markets. So yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. I'm going to go today. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sunday's grocery day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those, you know, those are just some really simple changes that you can start making right away. And I believe that we are um, going to hopefully upload, you know, this video. And I think it'd be really good to attach some links so you can provide mm -hmm that uh, information on, um, sorry, mm -hmm. I keep forgetting how to say it, Germanic uh, healing knowledge. You, you can just say German new medicine, or yeah, you can <laughs> say GHK or GMM. Yeah, yeah those so too, just but, some yeah. more, you know, interesting yeah. information to sort of yeah. um, look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once we get, yeah, we'll get things more organized and then yeah, we can provide lots of things like our, our own websites and little health plans that we have as well just with extra info and people can always email us or reach out to us in any way uh, with questions or concerns so yeah and we could even if people would like to be a guest we could potentially have them on to speak about their healing and health journey as well so yeah so we're open to that mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. if there's any specific topic that you want to mm -hmm. have more information on um, you can comment and let us know about that as well. If there's, you know, question that you want to have answered mm -hmm. or some information on something that would help you in your own health journey between the two of us, we've got a plethora of information and knowledge that we've accumulated over the years on many different levels. So mm -hmm. we will be creating lots of great content. Um, but then of course, if there's anything specific that you want to know as well, we can definitely target you know, some segments around that too.
Yeah. And if we don't know that much about it, that would be great for us too, because then we'll learn yeah. researching it and yeah. finding the people who do. Because I know a lot of people who know a fair bit about, you know, different aspects of health as well, where I might know bits, but they're absolute experts yeah. in it. So it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, great talking to you, Jacqueline, as always. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Danny. Okay. And thanks everybody for listening yep. in. Thanks very much. Bye.